It's a beautiful afternoon. I'm so grateful to you for being out here. It warms my heart to see so many of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marietta. Yo, know, if there was any doubt about it, we got the news that made it official just a couple of days ago that our president-elect Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump here in Georgia. Because change has come to Georgia. Change is coming to America. And retirement is coming for Senator David Perdue. Retirement is coming for Senator David Perdue. Retirement is coming for Senator David Perdue. See, we have problems to solve and things to do and work to get done. And, and as the dust settles on this presidential race, we can't lose sight of the fact that we're living at a moment of crisis and a moment of tragedy. That we've lost nearly a quarter of a million of our fellow Americans to this virus in the last eight months. That millions have lost jobs and homes and livelihoods and financial security. We're living at a moment of crisis. And we've been terribly misled this year. It didn't have to be this way. But the nightmare is ending. Trump is leaving. And people who know what they're doing will be making decisions for us. Now, speaking of Senator Perdue, Senator Perdue in Savannah a few weeks back. And I asked Senator Perdue some very simple questions. I asked Senator Perdue why he had lied to us and told us COVID-19 was no deadlier than the flu while he was trading medical and vaccine stocks. I asked Senator Perdue why he had voted four times to take health care away from people with pre-existing conditions. Senator Perdue didn't like those questions. Because, y'all, I don't think that anyone has told the truth to David Perdue's face in about 30 years. He didn't like those questions. He canceled our next debate. Perdue is chicken. And then last week I challenged David to three debates during this runoff. And I just learned about a half hour ago that he's refusing to show up for the Atlanta Press Club debate. My, my, if David Perdue doesn't want to answer questions in public about his record and debate his opponent, that's fine. He just shouldn't run for re-election to the U.S. Senate. Isn't that the bare minimum that we expect from people who serve us? Like, I don't promise to always vote the way everybody wants me to. And y'all shouldn't trust any candidate who does. But what I do promise you is that I'll come out and defend my record in public. I'll answer questions in public. I'll approach the people with an open heart and an open mind and a willingness to change my mind. I'll listen to criticism and scrutiny. I mean, isn't that what public service is all about? Imagine being a sitting U.S. Senator too much of a coward to debate your opponent in public. But then 
again, how does Senator Perdue defend the indefensible? See, actually, we have better things to talk about than David Perdue. Like, what happens next? Because like I said, he may not know it yet, but Donald Trump is leaving. We don't even have to talk about Donald Trump anymore. Imagine that. We don't have to talk about Donald Trump anymore. Because I'm tired of talking about Donald Trump. And if you're wondering what it is you've been feeling in your heart and in your soul for these last few days that maybe we haven't felt in a while, that's called hope. Because now it's up to us to define the next era in American history. And to define and stand up for the values that will guide us as we do that work. Because I believe, and I suspect you believe too, that human health is a human right, and not just a privilege for those who can afford it. That we have a moral obligation to leave future generations a clean and beautiful and healthy and habitable planet. That we have an obligation to secure equal justice under the law for every American, regardless of race and regardless of class. That in a public health emergency, we should be guided by public health experts who know what they're doing and not politicians who don't. But in order for us to make any of that happen, we have to win these two U.S. Senate races. In order for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris to be able to get anything done, to get us out of this pandemic, to invest in economic recovery, we have to win these two U.S. Senate races. In order for us to make sure that every Georgia family has the health care that they need. In order for us to invest in infrastructure and clean energy. In order for us to defend the privacy of women's health care and Roe v. Wade. We have to defend these two U.S. federal races. So my question for you, Marietta, is are you ready to work? Are you ready to organize and mobilize and register voters and turn out the people and get the people back out to the polls for January 5th? Are you ready to work? We're ready. Carlotta is ready. It's now my pleasure to introduce a friend of mine. Someone who is a moral leader for our state and for our country. Someone I've had the privilege of getting to know okay over these last few months. Someone I know I'll be spending a lot more time with over the next two. Will y'all please join me in giving a warm Marietta welcome to one of the two next U.S. Senators to represent Georgia, the from another mother, John S. L. Jordan, two of the next United States Senators from the great state of Georgia. Well, it 
this Sunday. And they put the preacher in front of a microphone. And it's been a long time since I stood in front of my congregation. Somebody turn the microphone down. All right. It's great to see you all out here tonight. Or it looks like y'all ready for an election. Yeah. Looks like y'all ready to make history. Yeah. Looks like you're ready to transform America into the great country that we already are, but we're pushing toward a more perfect union. Are you ready? Yeah. So listen. God is known by many names. Worshiped in many houses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. But of one blood, God has made all nations to dwell upon the earth. Yes. That we might seek after God, who is not far from any one of us. And as I look out on this beautiful crowd, this diverse gathering, red, yellow, brown, black, and white. Classes, rich and poor, gay and straight, young and old. This is a glimpse of what God intended for us. This is the dream. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause for being here. And when I say that, I want you to know that I include those who do not claim any religious tradition at all, but who are people of moral courage. I want you to know that I respect you and I see the glimpse of light in your eyes. I love you back. So listen, listen. We have important moral work to do because there are forces at work in our beloved country tonight who do not know how to lead us and so they are trying to divide us. Folks who have no vision traffic in division. And so we have to stand up in a moment like this and say that we are one Georgia, we are one people, we are one America, we have one humanity. And when you consider the long arc of our history, I am so very proud of my beloved state of Georgia tonight. Because over against the demagogues of hate and bigotry, Georgia is positioned to do a marvelous thing. Send a young Jewish man the set of immigrants who sat at the feet of Congressman John Lewis. who grew up in the public housing projects of Savannah, Georgia. Yeah! The pastor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s Ebenezer got the church to the United States Senate at the same time. This is what America is about. The Martin Luther King Jr. And Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel marched together in Selma to push us toward a more perfect union. Rabbi Heschel said that when I marched alongside Dr. King, I felt like my legs were praying. That's what we need. 
We don't just need praying lips, we need praying legs. We need legs that will keep on marching to freedom. We need legs that will stand up so that we won't simply call people essential workers. We'll pay them an essential wage. Make sure they have essential benefits. We need paying legs. We need folks who will stand up on the right side of history and say that all of God's children deserve equal protection under the law. That's who we are. We are America. We need legs that will march one more time during this runoff so that we can win the future for all of our children. Are you ready? And so I know it's dark. And I know that the times are difficult. But don't give up. And don't give in to the forces of cynicism and bigotry and division. Never embrace the lie that freedom is a zero-sum commodity. That if you get yours, I lose a bit of mine. No, we are all in this together. And that's why I, as a pastor, I, I take great umbrage at these so-called RIFRA laws, these religious freedom laws, that use religion as a weapon rather than a bridge, and suggest fallaciously that somehow if my sisters and brothers in the LGBTQ plus community win their freedom, that somehow that is an affront to my religious freedom. No, it is an affront to my faith wherever I see oppression and injustice, because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so whatever we do, my beloved, let's stand together. We're going to make it through this pandemic. And we're not just going to survive, we're going to thrive on the other side of the pandemic because we are America. This is what we do. We take on big challenges and we become even better. And while we're in the pandemic, maybe we ought to see it as an instructive moment, as tragic as it is, it is a teachable moment. Because we should have realized before the pandemic that if my neighbor does not have health care, then I'm in trouble. She may be uncovered, but I'm unprotected. If you didn't know it before the pandemic, now that we are dealing with a deadly airborne disease, my neighbor coughs, and that has implications for me. I should want that person to have health care. I should want that person to be covered so that they are taken care of and I'm protected. And that's why the forces of hatred and the demagogues of division are trying to distract us because they can't explain why they think it's a good idea to get rid of health care in the middle of a pandemic. They can't explain why they think it's all right. For our neighbors who have pre-existing conditions, 1.8 million Georgians with asthma and diabetes and hypertension and cancer and COVID for that matter should no longer be covered. And so they're trying to distract you. And while you're distracted, they're making their way laughing all the way to the bank. And we found out two weeks ago that sometimes that bank is in Beijing. <laughs> So let's stand together. I ran into a young lady the other day. She said, wow, I'm so glad to meet you, Reverend. I voted for you. And I said, thank you. She had no idea that she had to go back again. <laughs> Don't laugh. Get to work. Make sure that that young lady and everybody else knows that I thank you for the vote. John, thank you for your vote. But it doesn't count unless you go back. So make sure you go back. 
so that we can lift all of us out of this darkness into a new daybreak of freedom and prosperity for this great country. We can do it, but the only way to do it is together. Every now and then I get tired. And when I get tired, I look up. I'm a man of faith. And because I'm a preacher, I'd like to tell you that when I look up, I see something profound, the finger of God writing across the milky deep in Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. The truth is, all I see is birds flying by. But I like to see geese fly. Because geese fly in a V formation. Pelicans flap their wings faster, but they don't get as far because they fly alone. Geese fly together. And the one out front that's getting all the glory and the sunlight on his face, don't be jealous of that one because he's actually working the hardest. Because you can't lead people unless you love people. But what I like about geese is that when the one out front gets tired, or when his term is over, he don't like the fool. He don't create chaos. And when something doesn't go his way, some of the geese don't decide to shut the whole geese government down. He just moves back in the formation but stays in the formation. And another goose moves into his place. And they keep flying. Because geese understand that my individual location is not as important as our collective destination. And so what we need right now is some public servants. They don't have to be brilliant just have as much sense as a goose. <laughs> and let's stay together. Are y'all ready to win? Let's play together. Let's fight together. Let's struggle together. Let's play together. And together we shall overcome. God bless you. Good night. Thank you. 